The people leading the Vermont Bioenergy Initiative are forging the connection between diversified agriculture and renewable energy production. These farmers, scientists, and entrepreneurs are at the forefront of a local production for local use movement, and they are proving that local food systems and clean energy production together are economical, compatible, and essential. These are their stories. I'm John Williamson. We're here at State Line Farm in West Shaftesbury, Vermont. We're going to talk about clean and grain today. Two of the biggest expenses, especially on a dairy farm or any kind of livestock farm, is your grain bill and your fuel bill. And we can address both of those by growing oil crops, making our own biodiesel, running our equipment, and then having the grain to, uh, to supply our feed for our livestock. We've been growing grain here for a long time. We're just growing different types of grains now. And extracting the oil first and then feeding our livestock. Soybeans or canola, for instance, you have to remove the oil because it's too rich as it is a raw seed for the cows or sheep, their stomachs can't handle all that oil. We've set up our equipment here in the barn to do a continuous oil mill operation. The seed enters the barn through a dust-tight port to the top of the bin. The mill that we have is a Swedish-made mill. It's a tabby oil press. It has some really nice features. It's computer controlled. If it's overloaded, it'll shut itself off. Or if there's an interruption in the grain flow, it'll shut itself off too. It's nice to have those features. I can start it in the morning and let it run all day long and not have to worry about monitoring it made to run 24 hours, so it'll do about maybe a thousand pounds a day. So the grain comes in, the bin overhead, gravity flow through the mill, and it'll make about two to three gallons of oil per hour, depending on what feedstock you're running through. And there's a screw inside the, the barrel of this mill, and that pushes the grain forward against uh, the head that's on the front of it, and that creates a lot of compression in there, and it grinds the grain, squeezes the oil out. Too cold a grain or too warm a grain seems to reduce oil yield. You can control the speed, it's a variable speed. You can control the amount of compression. You can change the nozzles in the tip of the oil mill and uh, make different sized pellets. The oil runs off into the settling barrels um, and then into the storage tank. And then the grain uh, meal drops off into these bags and it takes a little better than a day to fill a bag. Uh, I'm Chris Callahan. I'm a consulting engineer who's been working uh, for the Vermont Biofuels Initiative of the Vermont Sustainable Jobs Fund for about the past five years. So some things that farmers can do to improve the milling process would include making sure that the seed is, is well cleaned and, and dried prior to storage in the bin. Um, also, as the uh, pressing continues throughout the day, consider checking the um, temperature of the oil, the temperature of the press head, um, the temperature of the seed coming into the mill and the cleanliness of the seed coming into the mill as well as moisture content. All of these things will change over the course of the day regardless of whether the settings of the mill have changed. The ideal temperature range uh, for pressing oil uh, is to keep the oil at about 104 degrees Fahrenheit, or I should say not above 104 degrees Fahrenheit, which generally means that the press head is between 140 and 180 degrees Fahrenheit. Another aspect of oil quality um, that needs to uh, be discussed is the need for filtering. When we first started milling oil, we, you know, we ran into a problem how to clean the oil. We noticed that whatever oil was in a pail would either sink or float. So we came up with these settling drums. It's got a submerged outlet, so the oil flows from one barrel to the next into the storage tank. Just by simple settling, um, we can clean the oil. And what that allows is for any sediment, uh, anything that's heavier than oil, to drop to the bottom of the tank and anything that's lighter to float above the outlet. It's recommended that prior to storage, the oil be filtered additionally with a 300 micron filter. Farmers should take care to store their oil after it's been pressed and filtered in um, a sealed, uh, opaque container in a cool, dark uh, location. You're trying to keep oxygen away from the oil. Um, the effect of heat and light is that it promotes reactions that degrade the oil and uh, produce gums in the oil that cause problems downstream for yeah, shelf life of the oil, but also biodiesel uh, production quality. Grain that's too wet gives you real poor oil yield, or uh, dirty grain uh, gives you poor oil yield. And this is a clipper cleaner. It'll do about uh, 50 bushels an hour, depending on what crop you're running through it. A combine can't clean grain um, like this. You can set this up so it's very precise, so you got the same amount of grain coming in at a constant rate. We can start it. It's 
To start with, uh, we can draw the grain out of our storage bins and load it into the hopper above this cleaner, and the gravity feeds through the cleaner. Um, the cleaner has a bunch of screens in it, and they're uh, shaking screens. It does uh, both sifting and scalping. The top screen has holes big enough for the sunflowers to fall through. The bottom screens are smaller than the sunflowers, so the, all the smaller particles fall through, but it holds the sunflower seeds back. And then there's airflow through this machine that blows out anything that's lighter than a sunflower seed. Okay, and then the clean seeds drop out from underneath. They're conveyed across in a cross auger and then they rise up in the elevator. And then from there I can direct them into either storage bin or into the oil mill bin. So it's basically a, a combine without wheels. So there are a number of uh, end uses of the meal coming off of the oil press uh, within Vermont. The primary one is livestock feed, and that has been how most of the meal thus far has been used. Um, there are other uh, end uses. One is uh, fertilizer and or as a compost amendment. The importance of these different end uses is that it diversifies the markets for uh, the farmers producing the meal. Some steps that farmers can take to improve the quality uh, of the end product, the, the meal in this case, are to ensure that as it comes off the press, the meal is allowed to cool uh, and dry completely prior to being uh, bagged up or sealed up and stored. This is really the only way you're going to extract oil on a farm scale. And after you run it for a long enough time, you'll understand what gives you the best oil yields. And you begin to understand the grains coming in, the different characteristics of them, and then how to set the mill up just by experience.